Live from the Business Radio X studio in Atlanta, it's time for Organization Conversation. Brought to you by Wall Control Storage Systems. Wall Control gives you the storage and organization you crave. Now, here's your host, Richard Grove. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Organization Conversation. I am your host, Richard, and I am here with Julie Hullett of Julie Hullett Concierge. Uh, Julie is Nashville's favorite personal concierge, and her experience team offers customized concierge and personal assistant services in Nashville and beyond. Julie helps you stop running errands and get your free time back, which I think everybody can appreciate and would enjoy enjoy more of. So welcome to the show, Julie. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so I kind of gave a you know the one liner introduction, but um, I guess tell our audience a little more about yourself, and we can kind of start with I think we'll start with your concierge service, and then kind of work back from there. Okay, I um, manage people's lives and their chaos. My um, core business is household management, and that involves everything from pets to uh, school supplies, to reservations for dinner, to golf, to travel, uh, finding staff, housekeepers. Um, I also solicit bids for projects for people and vet contractors, which is always fun and challenging. Um, And all points in between. I've found tutors for people. I've traveled for people. just anything that I can do that gives them their time back is kind of the goal of our business. Gotcha. So how, how did you get into that? How did, what's the, <laughs> what did that journey look like? Well, um, I had a corporate career with Bell South. I was with them for 26 years and took an early retirement and I kind of did things backwards. I went to college after my career. I worked at Belmont university and, um, when I graduated, I thought I would just go try another corporate job. And I found that was not a fit for me anymore. Um, so like all college graduates, I went to France and of hung out there. <laughs> I kind of hung out there um, in a place called Antibes, which is on the Southern coast and did, did some interpersonal work and um, invited some friends to come at the end of my visit there. And I had thought about what my skill set was. And I wanted to be in a service business where I could help people. Um, but candidly, I didn't want to be poor. So I thought about what can I do that will utilize those skills? Because I learned so much during my career, um, I had a variety of positions, so a lot of different skills. So they came over and I said, would you pay somebody to do this, et cetera, Mm -hmm. et cetera. And they were all like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. (laughs) So I came back and um, it was sort of I told two friends and they told two friends one of those things. And I had a homegrown website and, you know, um, word started getting around. I started making a little money. And then I got someone to design a website and then I got even different traffic and over the course of 11 years now, it's just evolved um, where I have people that I work with that help me. And I have a manageable list of clients for a long time. And I think a lot of people do this up front is I would say yes to everything, mm-hmm. you know, Yeah. and I learned to be selective and what I really could do, what my true bandwidth was. Um, and I'm in a comfortable place right now. I'm really enjoying it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, I feel like I'm helping people get their time back, but I'm also giving them peace of mind because they don't have to worry about some of the things that are kind of like the elephant in the room when they walk in the door every night. Yeah, very cool. So kind of along that journey, um, what did you find, you know, was not what you were looking to do? And then what's kind of like the ideal client? Like, I'm, you know, very curious to hear what, like kind of what your day looked like and what, what those clients you work with, what needs they have and what you're able to provide? Well, every single day is different, which I love that, you know, I'm not sitting at a desk and all that, but, um, and I learn a lot. One of the best, biggest benefits of this work is I know more about plumbing now than I ever thought, (laughs) or wanted to know, you know, electrical, you name it, because I get 
in the weeds with these guys about what they're doing. I have to understand it, obviously. So that's been a real plus. Um, it's helped me when I request bids, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. I don't transport animals, but I have people mm-hmm. that will, you know, so. <laughs> gotcha. That um, sounds like it could be hairy. Huh? Yes. No pun intended. No yeah. pun, <laughs> right. <laughs> and I have run a backpack or a forgotten tennis uh, racket to mm-hmm. school before, but I, I don't transport kids either, you know, and, and gotcha. people generally don't ask me to do that. Um, I do some event planning uh, that can be for my individual clients. And then sometimes uh, companies hire me to put on events for them. Uh, primarily, I have people that are visiting Nashville. You know, we're a big destination city right now. Yeah, and for so sure. I have eight or 10 people coming to do Nashville and they'll ask me to arrange the itinerary, accommodations, et cetera, et cetera. And I do that. That's fun. I enjoy that. Um, I I don't want to say there's things. I mean, I, I tell John Ray this one time in an interview, I had a lady ask me to stop by her house and cook a pound of bacon. Yeah. She was having a dinner and she wasn't going to be able to get her appetizer made in time if I didn't. And I worked for her. So I didn't mind. I went by there and did that, you know, so um, I'm not going to say there's nothing off limits. I, it's kind of like, I know it when I see it. Yeah. And like, yeah. it sounds like you have a lot of repeat customers and repeat clients. And it's probably like, I imagine it starts with one thing, like an event or something. And then they're like, oh man, I forgot this. And you're like, oh, I can do that too. And then that mm-hmm. leads to a phone call three weeks later when, you know, Julie, I think she might could help us with this. And then all of a sudden you're working with the person and not so much like the task maybe, but it's, it's the, the client, it's client driven versus like, I don't do that thing, you know? Right. And, and it's truly relational. Um, a lot of people will hire me and um, my model is a retainer. So mm-hmm. they'll hire okay, me. I was going to get to, yeah, yeah. How does the, how, what does the model look like for you? You know, you can say as much or as little as you want to about how all that, that works pricing and that kind of thing. Um, definitely well, they, happy to. They buy, buy a block of hours up front. And then I work that down like billable hours gotcha. um, and to track the task that I'm doing for them. But a lot of times, like you said, I'll be, um, I had some furniture restored for a lady and she said to me, oh, by the way, my sister has these antique mirrors and they need to be regilded. I I didn't even know there was a company here that did that. And I found Mm -hmm. them and they did it. And then uh, her neighbor had some antique Chinese lamps and the shades were silk and they'd been damaged in a move. And that is a lost art. It's uh, hand work, you know, done by someone. And I found um, an older woman who did that and she was willing to take on the project and the lady has her, you know, lamps and everybody's happy. And it does kind of work out like that sometime. Gotcha. Very cool. So are when you, so new customer acquisition, is that something you try for now or do you kind of just go off of uh, referrals or, you know, inbound web traffic? How does that work for you bringing on new clients? I would say um, probably 65% is referrals. Um, I do get inquiries on my website, um, even local people, you know, wanting to find out about my services. Um, And Instagram has been huge, which was a surprise, um, you know, about getting clients from there. Um, but people will see like my before and after pictures and then they're like, oh, well, we need you to do this for us or whatever mm-hmm. it might be. Yeah. Instagram's yeah. And social media in general, but Instagram specifically seems to be a really good, uh, it's, it does a couple things. It, uh, validates credibility for people. Um, mm-hmm. it allows you to show, you know, samples of work, like really simply. And I, it's also a super low, uh, you know, it's not barrier entry, but it's really easy for them to just DM you and ask you a question versus like filling out some online form. So yeah, we've seen the same kind of thing. It's really a, a very useful tool for, uh, you know, converting business and kind of showing what you do really quickly and easily. So, Agreed. yeah. So is it, is it, is it just Julie or is there a team that, uh, helps you out? I have a team. Um, for some things like uh, running certain errands or things that require trip time, 
Uh, that's time I can be in front of a client. So right. I'll kind of farm that out. But I have um, three people that I've worked with for about five years now, and trust them completely. And um, so they help out quite a bit. That's cool. Is it, and do you, do you service just Nashville or are you guys expanding out? You know, what, what's your, uh, I guess, area of service? How does that work? Primarily Nashville, um, some of the suburbs. Uh, and again, I travel for people, so there's no limit on that. But, um, you know, for the best efficiencies, I try to keep it within the Nashville area. Gotcha. Well, that's kind of a good segue too into, you know, we're organization conversation. So what are some of your tips for keeping yourself and your staff organized um, as you kind of work through projects? Well, although I take notes on my phone and my iPad, I still write things down. I still have a notebook. <laughs> yeah, I need to get better at that. That is, I, I need to do that. We have, uh, you know, one of our employees here, she does an awesome, she's always writing stuff down. And I'm just like, man, I need to do that because I don't remember everything and I don't remember it the way I should. So yeah. And those little details, you know, are are what matter. So I can put bullets in my phone all day long, but at the end of the day, after nine appointments or how many, when I get home, I'm looking at those bullets going now, what did she say about that color? And when does she want that delivered? And so I just find writing things down. Um, I also schedule time in the morning. That's my time when I have Julie time. And I start my day the same way every day. I stay in routine. um, And I'm really efficient when I'm planning my trips with clients. If I'm going to go see somebody on the other side of town, I look at all the things I can do on the way over there and on the way back. I mean, I really try to be methodical about that. Um, I in the past three years, I've learned to say no. Uh, and that was a, a personal thing I had to really work on. Yeah, that's you know? it's very hard to do and very important. And especially right. the more, you know, going back to referrals, the more you get of that, if you don't say no, you're just run ragged. So you kind of touched on it there, but are there any, you know, going back to giving people their time back, are there any anything, anything you've seen over the years that a lot of people are doing wrong um, or kind of, low hanging fruit for people to get some time back, you know, things they might not think about that would, you know, gain them an hour here and there or a way to structure their day or a way to think about time that would be helpful that, you know, to our audience listening, uh, to help them, you know, grab some minutes and hours back in their day. (laughs) I I do think, um, prioritizing and this is another thing I do. And it's, it's, um, it's just something I've done since I started my work life is, Every night before I go to bed, I make a to-do list every night. And then there, there's something tangible in front of me. Mm-hmm. There's no greater joy than at the end of the day to look and see all those things crossed off and know what I've accomplished. That also helps me because I track my mileage for business. If mm-hmm. I've omitted something in my app, then I have a record of that. So I know where I was and what I did, and, you know, how to calculate that. That's another thing is um, people that use business mileage. It's so easy to put it in your phone. My app converts it to a spreadsheet at the end of the month. And I just send that to my CPA and it's all there, you know? So there, there's some great technology tools out there, but there's also some basic pen and paper things that still work, you know, but I think the most important thing is prioritizing because not everything is the number one thing it should not be the number right. one thing on your list. Number two is scheduling, um, because scheduling time for yourself. Because if you've got, if you're grounded, then you can deal with whatever comes up. And I know, honestly, when I look at some of those to do lists the night before, I think, how in the world am I going to get all that done? Honestly, mm-hmm. I've had that thought, and somehow. <laughs> I always do, but I think it's because I start my day in the right place in my head, in my heart, you know, I'm going out to serve people and this is what I'm going to accomplish. So, yeah, that's good. And I think knowing yourself too, like that is important as well. I was listening to a podcast. I can't believe what I, I can't think of which one it was, but basically they were talking about time management and, um, they're like the, the guy was like, I'm a procrastinator. And I bet a lot of you are too, but you don't think about it the way I do. And I'm like, I'm because I'm not a, I didn't think I was a procrastinator at all. I'm like the opposite of it. Like if I get home from a trip, my suitcase is unpacked, like in the laundry, everything's done. Like I, I get it done. 
But what I'll do is I will put off another thing to do that thing. So it's like whatever the most urgent thing is, is what I do or whatever I perceive to be the most urgent thing. And it might not be the best use of my time, like long term. So I'm procrastinating that longer term thing. So anyways, I, I thought that was a helpful thing that helped me kind of, you know, be self-reflective on how I spend my time. So, yeah. It is, but, but, but the I'm list and the there. priorities or, the, or just the having a list and prioritizing versus whatever seems to be the most urgent um, is a super helpful thing. Right. And, and I so admire you for unpacking as soon as you get home. I have people that don't do that. And a week later, they, they still feel like they're not yes. organized because they've got that reminder every time they walk in the room and, yeah. you know, take, take 30 minutes and unpack your stuff. Hello. <laughs> exactly. It helps. And it helps me like bookend, like the trip is over and now nothing's like bleeding into the next thing and crossing over. Yeah. It's stuff. It's a mental unpacking as much as it is like physically getting stuff in its spot. So I agree. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. And then it becomes a pain point and I'm all about no pain. You know, Yeah. So. Every time you look at it, you think I got to do that. So just do it. <laughs> look at it one time and think at one time and then do it and then you're done with it. So yeah, I just, that's totally in my DNA to do it that way. So um, yeah. So speaking of unpacking, what, um, you know, how do you manage your time kind of, you know, work-life balance as much or as little as you want to talk about that. Uh, wh- and, you know, what do you do for fun, vacation, that, that sort of thing? Okay. Well, my, what makes my heart happy is travel. And, um, you know, I have to make time to do that in my work, obviously, because it it's important to me to do it. It satisfies a lot of things for me. So um, travel is something I enjoy. Hiking, I am on the trails. I'm very fortunate. I live 10 minutes from a great park with all kinds of trails. So three times a week, I'm over there. I'm training right now for a hike I'm going to do in Vermont the first weekend in October. So you got to keep your miles up, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. It definitely is hard to build back up if you let it slide. Right. Um, And, you know, we have so many wonderful music venues and opportunities here in Nashville. So I like music a lot. And I'm an avid reader. I burn through about four books a month sometimes. Really? <laughs> wow. That is impressive. Yeah. yeah. What are some good ones? Oh, well, well we can I just... talk about that next. I, oh, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm always curious what somebody who reads a lot finds worth reading. I have a long list. Um, and so uh, back to the scheduling. So I, st- like I say, I have things in place that work for me, but I, I start my day. I get up early, very early five o'clock. And I start my day with, uh, coffee and gratitude and my meditation and getting centered. And then I work out and I also, I also train with a trainer. So that, and the hiking keeps me, uh, lean and mean as they say. And mm-hmm. then I, um, jump into my work day and I, I really try to stop. And this is going to sound like I don't work much, but I do work a lot when I'm working. Um, but by four 30 or five, I am trying to head home because I have to have decompression time, you know, and then if I'm going out, obviously I need that little pad in there, but, um, and then I try to really disconnect during the evening. Once I make that to-do list then I'm done, you know, and that's really important. Try to close the door. Yep. Yeah. Get it out of your head and get it on paper and then let it be. So have you always been that disciplined or is that something that developed over the years or a certain life event? How, is that just, how, how does that look for you? Cause that's definitely very disciplined schedule. Well, honestly, it, I think it's my, D, <laughs> my yeah. DNA. Um, I used to get up, you know, and make my bed when I was like three years old, you know, I'd have my room just perfect before I walked out of the door. And part of that's probably some parenting, I think, but um, I've always been like that. Always. And not not to the OCD point, but to the point where I just like to know, I just ha- like to have a plan. You know, I like to have things organized. I like to know where things are. It, it just works better for me. Gotcha. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, so kind of going back, I guess, to Nashville, um, what are some cool things to do in Nashville coming from your perspective? And I don't want you to give it away because people need to reach out to you if they want to, <laughs> you know, have it scheduled. But um, it's a town I have only been to once or twice, and I definitely want to get back up there. Got some friends there. So, uh, you know, 
kind of on a fun side, what would you, what would you speak to there? Well, when you all get to babysitting days, you call me and I'll put together oh, a trip for you. Okay. I absolutely will do that. <laughs> well, there's some amazing hotels now um, and more to come. I mean, we're getting some high end things like the Ritz and the intercontinental, but we have lovely boutique, boutique hotels. Our food scene has really developed. I, I could eat out three times a day for the next 10 years and never hit everything because there's always a new restaurant, a new chef. And I follow a lot of chefs. So I've learned a lot um, that way. Um, the music is phenomenal. There are small venues. There's big venues. There's clubs. We have everything from um, speakeasies to cigar clubs to um, tours, you know, and then all the other stuff, like with the bachelorette party and all that, I, I won't go there, but yeah, um, it seems like, it seems like a place that's like turned into a destination for sure. For yes. like, you, like you said, the bachelorette bachelor parties, you know, it's a yes. vacation spot for sure. And, and, and other things like, you know, birthday celebrations, corporate retreats. I have three corporate retreats in October that I'm managing okay. for people. And that, so what that involves is the hotel, the reservations, their transportation, their dinner plans. I will say there is a really uh, cool club here called the 1230 club. That's owned by Justin Timberlake. It's got okay. several levels and I, I seem to book a lot of groups there. It's, it's happening, you know? Yeah, that's food. cool. Yeah. Yeah. The corporate retreat is very interesting. And I'll definitely talk yeah. to you about that because we okay. want to do something, you know, kind of an offsite and we're in Atlanta. So it's not, you know, it's not far at all from us, um, but kind of an offsite to get away. And, you know, you, you think a little different when you're not, you know, in the building. So exactly. um, I think that would be super helpful. So, well, cool. I don't want to, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but is there any, um, like, do you have like a, the craziest, experience you've ever had doing what you're doing or something you're super proud of or some kind of, you know, kind of out there situation that you think our audience would find interesting? Because I mean, you can think about, you know, planning the corporate retreats and the bachelor bachelorette parties, but is there anything that you're like, well, I can't believe, you know, the client asked that and we pulled it off? <laughs> well, I'll just say this. One day I'm going to write a book. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That'll be, yeah. But in, the meantime, yeah. Yeah. but in the meantime, one thing that I thoroughly enjoyed was early on, um, I had a client who was a retainer client. She and her husband were on a round the world trip and with other couples on charters. And the gentleman needed to come back to Nashville, had some health issues, and she wanted to stay on the trip. So literally on Friday, she emailed me and said, I need you in Nairobi on Monday. And oh, I said, man. okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and um, I went and, you know, going over, you know, I was in the cattle car with 4 million other people, but coming back yeah. business class, uh, spent the night in Amsterdam. I mean, you know, just fabulous. Yeah. Trip. And, you know, I hope that happens again very soon. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. It's cool to also on you to be able to be that spontaneous and, you know, be able to say yes. Cause that's, you know, you probably wouldn't remember that weekend if you didn't do that, but you do because you did, you know? So exactly. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Very cool. Well, um, don't want to take up too much of your time, Julie, but is there anything else that we haven't touched on that you'd like our listeners to know about you or your services or your business? Anything, anything in that, in that line of questioning I can ask you? Um, uh, well, um, typically I have a wait list and occasionally I have openings on that. That's always on my website if I do, um, you know, because I, I want to keep those numbers manageable, obviously. Right now, I don't have an opening, but people move, circumstances change, you know, so that happens. Um, I did start a podcast earlier this summer called Time Well Spent with Julie Hullett. And I, I'd like for people to tune into that if they would. Absolutely. And you guys might hear me on there. So yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely check it out. <laughs> yes. I have incredible guests that I interview. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a good one. So um, yeah, you guys uh, check out Julie, Julie Hullett. Um, how, and one, one last time, how can people find you, your business, your socials? How can they reach out? Okay. So my website is juliehullett.com. Very simple. Instagram, jhconcierge. Uh, LinkedIn, just Julie Hullett. 
I'm all over the same ones you are. So Awesome. Yeah, thank sounds you. good. Well, thank you so much for coming on and it's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Organization Conversation is brought to you by Wall Control, a family-owned and operated producer of best-in-class wall-mounted organizers for your home or business, made right here in the USA. To learn more, go to wallcontrol.com.